Hi, hello, students. Um, this is uh, part three of our separation of var uh, variable series for the heat equation. Um, as you recall in the last video, this is where we left off. And um, I kind of hastily pointed out that um, uh, we add the solutions. And uh, I just want to give you a little bit of interpretation and then do a recap of the separation of variables technique. Um, first off, I just want to recap that um, this diffusivity term, this uh, D here, that um, that has to do with the rate of decay. Remember that if you have, a, for example, if um, this was concave down, then um, this second derivative would be negative, and so we'd have a, um, u du dt would be less than zero, so that means the function would be decreasing, and the rate of decrease is governed by this d, and you can see that with the exponential decay term here. It's also going to be governed by the frequency content of our solution, which is the n pi squared. So um, this is going to decay actually uh, fairly rapidly. Then um, we have the um, basis functions. These are the sine functions, and these will satisfy the boundary conditions. Um, if you plug in 0 or 1 into the solution here, you will get 0, so you can check that. And the solution, as t goes to infinity, um, decays to 0, which is the steady state, as expected. Um, and the frequency content of our solution is um, given by the uh, n pi here. And um, the cn, the uh, coefficients here, um, you can see in a previous video where I compute Fourier series how to do that. And um, the thing I'll point out here is um, one way to look at this. Um, let me do this a little more carefully than I did at the end of the last video. But, um, um, you know, if you, if you think of it, you know, you have 0, 1. And if you think of, you know, your symmetry is around 1 half, then um, I know you're used to seeing maybe minus L to L. But um, your your integral is going to go from zero to one, and so it's as if your L is equal to one half, uh, so to speak, and um, that means that you're moving one half in this direction to one, and one half in this direction to zero, and then uh, one over L would of course be equal to two, and that's why you have this uh, this two here, okay, and uh, of course this is a um, a scalar product of um, f and sine. Um, so uh, uh, you may want to look at a video where I actually construct the Fourier coefficients um, and I show you that uh, this is actually turns out to be the right thing to do. Um, okay so that's our solution for the heat equation and let me take you back to our slides. Um, so here's a summary. Um, the first thing you do is uh, you assume yet you have a separable solution and um, that turns out to be the right thing to do. It will satisfy the um, the uh, PDE. Now, will this converge um, to if you let t be zero? Notice that what we've done here is um, where's my there's my pen. Uh, notice that if we let t be zero, then uh, u of Oops, u of x zero is equal to uh, c n sine n pi x. Yeah, there's no exponential term because we let t be zero, so that's just one. And um, this is n equals one to infinity, where c n is given by um, this. Uh, this projection here or this uh, scalar product and um, this we hope uh, converges depending on what the uh, behavior of f is to f and so um, what you have here is actually when t is zero you've just expanded the the initial condition uh, using a sine series okay um, and that's going to be a common theme with um, with PDEs when you do separation of variables um, you just look at your, you're essentially just going to look at the boundary conditions. You're going to say, oh, yeah, I have zero boundaries. That's going to be a sine. If I have derivative zero boundaries, that's going to be a cosine. And um, what I'm just going to do then is just expand the, um, the initial condition um, in either a sine or cosine. Or if you have mixed conditions, you might have a combination of sines and cosines. And this will be, you just look at the expansion of f in terms of sines and cosines. That's going to be a common theme with the uh, separation of variables. And so I just wanted to point that out. You also have to, um, if you want to be mathematically rigorous, you have some issues of 
uh, convergence to deal with and um, this uh, you'll need functions of a certain class so that you get these um, Fourier series to converge to F um, but uh, I'm not going to get into the the details of that right now um, okay so we assume that we have a separable variable uh, separ uh, separable um, uh, function u of x we break it into um, x of x times t of t we replace the pde and n independent variables with n ode uh, odes so um so that means if we have uh, x of x and t of t then we're going to end up with um, two odes um, one for time and one for space then uh, we construct a separation constant constants and sometimes that's the part that gives students some trouble they're like why is it that um, when we had t t dots over um, t is equal to x double primed over x, um, why was that equal to the separation constant, which ultimately turned out to be uh, minus mu squared? Um, you know, <laughs> just remember that on the left hand side you have changes with respect to time equal to changes with respect to x you can't have change in space so change in time is equal to a change in space the only way that that's going to um, be true is if um, there is no change okay and if it's equal to a constant um, and then once you do that you can uh, once you set up this system of ODEs you can solve for T and then you can solve for X separately you initially solve for X and set up um, the um, the, um, the boundary conditions um, so um, we saw solutions and parameters so that um, we have um, well-behaved solutions that's why we selected a negative mu squared so that the derivative with respect to time behaved and decayed um, and um, we implemented the boundary conditions so that um, with uh, the derivative with respect to space and that impacts the type of series we're going to have zero boundary conditions will give a sign um, zero derivative boundary conditions uh, we have to be careful about being well posed but if one of them is um, a derivative boundary condition that is zero you'll end up with a cosine you could have mixed boundary conditions and then the initial condition which requires a Fourier expansion of this of the initial data um, in terms of whatever the basis functions that you got from number six okay from the from the uh, boundary conditions um, so that's a recap of the separation of variables technique and uh, um, now um, I would say uh, go practice a couple problems and uh, try to repeat this. It's going to be the best way to learn um, this uh, technique. Give it your best. All right. Good luck.